Welcome to part four of my Born Door series. If you're returning, then I'm glad you're sticking around. If you're new, go watch parts one through three and then return here so you can watch just how I hung the railing for my Born Door. Let's jump right in. Due to the length of my rail, it came in three part assemble. And to begin this process, I began with the middle rail piece. In order to begin the process of leveling out my middle piece of my railing, I first began by making sure the middle of the rail piece aligned with the middle of my backing. Then using a scale, I made sure that the middle of my backing was leveled off. And using a pencil, I then marked off exactly where I would drill to begin hanging the spacers along with the railing. And just as a reminder, safety is the number one rule when you DIY with Champ. Mom, be careful. Yes, and after one of my favorite helpers reminded me that safety is the number one rule when we DIY with Champ, I began to pre-drill the hole that I would need in order to hang the railing with the spacer. While installing some of the bolts using a socket, I noticed that it was stripping away some of the paint that was coated on the bolt. So using a piece of tape from previous sections of this Born Door series, I coated the inside of my socket. Here's a view of what that looked like. After making sure that all my hardware pieces would be protected, it was then time to start installing the railing for my Born Door. After pre-drilling my hole, I then used an old trusted method in order to prevent any splitting of my backing by inserting the ball and then reversing the ball out. That way I could begin installing the railing. And at this point, let's just play a little game in the comments and see how many times I had to remember to put my goggles back on during the drilling process. So again, after pre-drilling the hole and then using the old trusted method in order to make sure that there would be no wood splitting, it was now time to start tightening down the bolt, this time with the rail attached. And while all the DIYs that I do on my channel can be accomplished alone, remember, it's okay to ask for help. Because as one of my favorite helpers had to remind me, even if you just need to be handed a tool, it's okay to ask for help. However, because I was partially doing this alone, I found that it was easier to use not only the socket with the drill, but also the hand tool. So I had to wrap that tool with tape and here's a view of what that looked like. And by using this hand tool, I was also able to reduce the amount of paint that was being stripped away from the bolt. And I'd also like to take a little time to remind you to like, comment, and subscribe. Are you keeping up with how many times I had to adjust my goggles? After getting the bolt tight enough to where I did not have to hold both ends of the middle railing, I then used my scale to see how leveled it was so that I can adjust and begin tightening the bolt down to completely support the railing. And unfortunately, I think the hardest part of this process was making sure to replace my goggles into the correct position whenever I would go back to drilling because the rest of the process is pretty much repetitive, making sure things are leveled out and then tightening down. Because if I learned nothing else during this process, I definitely learned that it's okay to ask for help, even if it's just because I need to be handed something. And after the middle part of your railing is all installed, there's no rhyme or reason for why I chose the left side instead of the right. However, you do need to make sure that the middle of your railing is all leveled out and secured because it makes it extremely easy to secure down the right and the left side of the railing. It is also extremely important that you remember to use the spacer when you are trying to mark off where you need to pre-drill your hole 
because if you don't use the spacer then it's hard to get an accurate reading on whether or not the railing will be level. After getting an accurate spot of where I needed to pre-drill my hole, the hole was then pre-drilled. I then used the old trusted method of installing the vault, reversing the vault out, and then placing the pieces onto the rail so that I could begin installing the rail. I also would like to point out that on each rail there are three spots to install the spacers along with the bolt. There is a spot in the middle, there is a spot on the left side, and then there is a spot to connect the middle piece of rail to whatever side that you are working on. I would begin installing the middle bolt first. Then I would install the bolt that connects the middle piece to whichever side that I'm on. I recommend that you begin with the middle spacer, especially if you're working alone. That way you are able to support both the railing and the scale to make sure that everything is leveled off. This will allow you to make any adjustments necessary in order to level off your railing. And here's a view of me using the flexibility of starting with the middle spacer to make sure things are leveled off. And then I will begin tightening them down, then making sure that they are again leveled, then tightening them down, and repeating that process until the railing is completely secure to the back end. And my goal by continuously repeating the steps of this process is to make sure that my railing is as secure and as leveled as possible because again, the last thing we wanna do is save money by DIY just to have this thing tumbling down on you in the middle of the night. And now with the middle and the left side of my railing all leveled out, and securely supported to my backing, it was now time to move on to the right. And with the process pretty much staying the same, I connected the right side of my railing to the middle and then began marking the spot so that I could secure my railing to my backing just with a lot better lighting. And with the process not really changing from here on out, this section of the video is just so that my visual learners can get an accurate depiction of exactly what I said previously in the video. And if you stuck around through all the bad lighting, thank you so much and enjoy watching me install the rest of this railing securely to my backing. And just as a reminder, the number one rule over at Simply Cham TV is safety first. So don't be like me. Remember to wear your goggles throughout the duration of installing your railing. Did anyone catch how many times I had to adjust my goggles? If you did keep up with the amount of times I had to adjust my goggles, go ahead and put it down in the comment section below. After all those repetitive steps, you've just simply DIY installed your railing for your barn door, like the champ you are, and I'm super proud of you. 
thank you for sticking around through part four of my Born Door series. Come back for part five because I'm going to show you just how I patched all those screw holes that support my backing. Can't wait to see you next time.